welcome back to the channel. Today, we're starting a new series on physical design in VLSI. And we're kicking it off with a topic that is the foundation of any successful chip design. PDKs, inputs and libraries. By the end of this video, you'll understand how these elements come together to shape the entire design process, whether you're a beginner or already familiar with VLSI. This video will offer new insights and make these essential com concepts easier to grasp. This video will offer new insights and make these essential concepts easier to grasp. Let's kick things off with PDKs or process design kits. Think of them as an instruction manual for building your chip. They contain all the parameters from how transistors, resistors, capacitors and wires will be created on a silicon. A PDK is like a construction blueprint detailing every component and its placement. Imagine you're assembling a Lego set. The PDK tells you exactly how each piece fits together to make sure your design doesn't fall apart. Without a PDK, you'd be flying blind and trust me, the chip won't work. Think of a PDK like a DNA of your chip. It defines how transistors, capacitors and other components are built, how they interact and how they will perform on a silicon wafer. Design rules. Every foundry provides a specific set of design rules that determine spacing, layer thickness, alignment, etc. Without these rules, your chip might end up with design violations that cause shorts in open circuits. Next is device models. PDKs also include device models. Simulations of how individual transistors, diodes and resistors will behave under different conditions. These models are cu crucial for accurate simulation before fabrication. They are like the behavioral profiles of every component on your chip. Next up is process corners. Process corners account for variations in manufacturing. Even though we aim for perfection, real life conditions can cause slight shifts in transistor performance due to temperature or voltage variations. A PDK includes fast, slow and typical process corners to test your design in multiple conditions. Now let's talk about the inputs needed to physical design. Before you start placing and routing your chip, you need three main inputs. The netlist, timing constraints and technology files. The netlist. Now let's explore the inputs to physical design. Before you even start laying out a chip, you need a set of files that tells the design tool what to do. These inputs define the logic of the design, its timing constraints and physical parameters for manufacturing. Here's a breakdown of each. Netlist. The netlist is essentially the blueprint of a logic. It, it's a file contain the logic connections between all the elements in your design. Basically telling the PD tool the gate connects to that gate. If the PDK defines the how of manufacturing, the netlist defines the what. Think of the netlist as a wiring diagram for your house. It shows where each wire goes but doesn't specify the materials. That's the job, the PDK. This netlist is derived from the synthesis process once the RTL file is given to the synthesis engineer. The synthesis process is done by the synthesis tool, either the DC from Synopsis or the Cadence Genus tool. And then the LEC is performed and once the LEC is passed, this golden netlist is given to as an input to the PNR tool. The timing constraints are the constraints which are given to the design in order to meet the timing expectations or the frequency in which the design has to run. As you can see, there are some multiple commands which goes for set input delay hyphen clock get clocks hyphen delay. So you are adding input delay and output delays, minimum capacitance, maximum capacitance, fan out, transition to your clock signals in order to meet the timing expectations of your design. These timing constraints are combined into a file called as this SDC, Synopsis Design Constraints, which is also a major input for your design in order for your design to work at a speed which you desire. Technology Files 
Technology files are closely tied to the PDK. They provide specific data for materials, processes, and even how layers are stacked in the design. If you are working with different technology nodes, say 7 nanometer versus 5 nanometer, the technology file will change accordingly. Let's say you are designing a GPU. You will use a netlist to define its logical function, timing constraints to ensure it hits the desired clock speed, and technology files to make sure it adheres to the foundry's 5 nanometer process. Without these inputs, your design tool wouldn't know what to do. In addition, the technology file contains the process node, the technology node and the unit information. It also contains the metal layer information, the thickness, the color, the visibility, the width of the metal layers used. It also contains the VR information and the site arrays and site posts and ties okay. Now let's dive into libraries. Libraries are a pre-verified building blocks used in chip design and they are an essential part of speeding up the design process. Imagine libraries like Lego blocks, you don't have to re-engineer every block, you just snap them together. First one, these include standard cells, what are basic logic elements like gates and flip-flops, I.O. libraries that handle input and output functions and memory blocks like SRAM and RAM. It also contains analog blocks like PLLs and DACs which are specialized and handle non-digital signals. These are vital for things like voltage regulation and clock generation. Let's say you're building a smartphone chip. The standard cells from the logic and I.O. library manage external connections and memory components handle storage and app processing. You don't design these from scratch every time. You grab them from the libraries and start building. Moving on to the types of libraries and NDMs. So .lib and .dv, these files are which contain the timing, logical and area information of your design. The .lef and .frame contains the physical information of the standard cells which are present in your design. For example, the height of the standard cell, the width of the standard cell, etc. The TLU plus file contains the parasitic information that is the RC parasitic information of the nets. It contains the net delays including combined resistance. The TLU plus file includes library cell models for noise and variation analysis. TLU plus files also contains advanced timing and power optimization techniques. Fine. The .tf as I discussed is the technology file which contains the information of your metal layers via site row, site array type which are required in order for your design to perform according to the foundries. NDMs are nothing but two data models which collaborate all the files that is the dot, dot .lib, dot .db and your dot left that is your logical timing and physical information which are which are collaborated using file manager and which are given to the input to your pnr tool most recent tool which uses the ndm format is fusion compiler so how do you, all these components work together in a physical design your design starts with the netlist and timing country the PDK provides the framework while libraries bring in pre-characterized components. Your design tool, whether it's a novice, ICC2, FC or another tool, integrates all these inputs to create a physical layout for your chip. In this layout, the tools place the standard cells and draw the interconnections, checking against the design rules from PDKs to ensure the chip is manufacturable. It's like cooking a complex meal. The PDK is your recipe, the inputs are your ingredients and the libraries are pre-made sauces or sites. Your design tool is the chef making so sure everything comes out perfectly. That wraps up the basic episode on PDK's inputs and libraries in physical design. In the next episode, we're diving into more deep dives into physical design. Stay tuned because things are about to get exciting. 
and don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the bell icon to stay updated with the series.